Hello, and welcome to this lesson on input binding in Svelte. In this video, we learn about form handling and input binding. Input binding is a combination of string interpolation and event handling. Basically, it allows us to react to input events and output data at the same time. This ensures that the logic and the view are always in sync. Input binding uses the bind directive on the form element we want to take input from. Then, we specify the attribute the element uses to receive its value. In most cases, that's the value attribute. Then, we need to tell Svelte what data in the logic we're binding to, like a variable or an array. As an example, let's use a text input that asks the user to enter their name. At the moment, all we have is the text input field and a label connected to it. We want to store the name they type, and we also want to show the name in the input's label. We'll start by adding a variable called first name with an empty string. And like we learned in the one-way data binding lesson, we can output data to the page with string interpolation. So in the label, we'll add a pair of curly braces with first name between them. The final step is to link first name with the input. A text input field receives its value in the value attribute, so, bind, colon, then value. And, the data we're binding, is first name. So, the name we type will be stored in the first name variable. And, because we also output it in the label, we should see a name appear as we're typing. Let's save and head over to the browser to test it. Each time we type a letter, it shows in the label. So, everything works as it should. If you remember from the previous lesson on event handling, we had to do the same thing in a two-step process, where we used a function to modify the data property. With the bind directive, the data is directly connected to the input, so we don't need a function or the event object. Because forms are such a common part of an application, it's worth it to go over the various form elements and demonstrate how to bind them. We'll cover text areas, single select drop downs, multi select controls, radio button groups, checkbox groups, and finally, single checkboxes. So, let's get started. A text area also receives data into the value attribute. So, we bind that data exactly the same as we do with a text field. To demonstrate, let's change the input type from text to text area. If we go to the browser and type something into the text area, it shows up in the label like we expect. When we're working with groups that contain child elements, we specify the bind directive on the group's parent. For example, a single select dropdown uses the select element as the parent and option as its children. So we do the binding in select. The data we receive will be whatever's in the value attribute of the option element. If we switch over to the browser and choose an option, its corresponding value will show in the label. When we use a multi-select control, the data must be stored in a multi-value data container, like an array. A multi-select control is just a drop-down with the multiple attribute, so we also do the binding in the select element. If we head over to the browser and click on a country, it selects it and shows it in the label. If we press control and click on more options, they're added to the array. It should be noted that only items that are selected will be added to the array, there's no unselected value to store. Radio button groups don't use a parent-child relationship like the drop-down. Instead, radio buttons are grouped together by giving each button in the group the same name. So basically, we have multiple inputs that relate to the same value. When that's the case, we bind to a special group instead of binding to the value attribute. Svelte will take the value and store it in the variable we specify in the group binding. If we go over to the browser and select one of the radio buttons, the rating in the label will update with the correct value. In some cases, we'll want one of the radio buttons checked by default. Typically, we do that with the checked attribute, but that won't work here. We need to select the value instead of using the checked attribute. 
Because Veld uses the values in the group, and the variable is bound to that group, we select a radio button by specifying one of the values in the variable. So, if we want to select the middle button, we just set rating to its value, which is OK. If we save and take a look in the browser, the radio button will be selected. Checkbox groups work exactly the same as radio groups. But because a user can have multiple selections, the data must be stored in a multi-value data container, like an array. Like with the multi-select control, only items that are selected will be added to the array, there's no unchecked value to store. If we want one or more values to be checked by default, we need to select them by specifying their values in the array. As an example, let's select the second and third checkboxes. So, milk and eggs. If we save and switch to the browser, the two checkboxes will be checked. A single checkbox works a little differently. There's only one, so we can't use group. Instead, we bind to the checked attribute with a Boolean variable. If we go to the browser and check and uncheck the box, it shows true or false in the label. And of course, if we want the checkbox to be checked by default, we just change the variable to true. If we go to the browser now, the checkbox is checked. Now that we understand how to work with various form controls, let's quickly discuss how to submit the data. A form submission is a regular event, so we can use the on directive to bind to the submit event and reference an event handler function. The function, of course, is responsible for performing any operations on the data, like validating and sending it to a storage layer, like Firebase or MongoDB. For our example, we have a simple form that asks for a user's name and binds it to the first name variable. If we go to the browser and enter a name, it's stored in the variable and shows in the label. So our input binding works as we expect. For the form submission, the first thing we'll need is a button. Then, we need to handle the submission with a function, so let's create one in the script section, called handler. To keep the example simple, we'll just let the handler display an alert with the name that comes from the input field. Then finally, on the form, we'll bind the submit event with on, colon, submit, and reference the handler function. Let's go to the browser and enter a name. And, when we submit the form, we'll get the alert. The form submission is just normal event handling, so we can attach event modifiers like prevent default to it, and it will work as it should. So after submit, we add a pipe, then prevent default. We'll go to the browser, type a name, and submit. It shows the alert, so everything still works fine. Alright, that concludes this lesson on input binding in Svelte. In the next video, we'll learn how to conditionally render elements with if else blocks. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one.